Hello YouTube, in today's video we're going to have some fun with this HP EliteBook 2560p. I've shown this laptop in a video showcasing the Latitude E6320, uh, where I said that this was a laptop with a couple of problems. And, well, it still is that same problematic laptop. But the fact is, uh, I didn't have to return it, so I still own it. And I basically got all my money back, so I got this basically free. So this is a fun little laptop to do some experimentation with. And we're going to do just that in this video. So I just uh, put in this USB flash drive. This contains Chrome OS, or Chromium OS, the community-derived version. And we're going to see if we can get that running on this. Now, I keep forgetting the HP boot key for, a, uh, for the boot selection menu. Uh, F9. So let's take a look if we can get this running on this. So just to reiterate, this is uh, a 2560p EliteBook. It has a Core i5-2520M, 3 gigabytes of RAM, and uh, I just put in a 160 gigabytes WD black hard drive. I don't know if that drive is healthy at all, so I pulled that straight from the latitude. I didn't even really do much with it because it was terribly slow. So, yeah. I just hope that we can get uh, get some life out of this thing using a different operating system than we usually deal with. I thought the caps lock on this also had a light, but it doesn't, of course. And I'm ready for my second attempt. I wrote a different image now. This is a uh, vanilla build, quote unquote. That's at least what it was advertised as. This one dates back to May of 2017. The one I had on the USB flash drive before was the latest weekly build. Oddly enough, this is the 32-bit version and it's a different build and it's now like... It was 8 gigs to, uh, to write to the USB drive. Which is weird. Because the uh, latest weekly was only 4 gigs, so... Maybe something went wrong there, I have no idea. One thing I do know though is that it's not picking up this hard drive. And now it is. Okay. Immediately roars into life and yep, now it starts booting. That's good. There we go. Now to find out if this thing actually has an installer or not. I don't know. Let me just turn this monitor off, by the way. There you go. Wow, it actually darkens stuff up considerably. That's interesting. I'll keep it in the back as an extra light source, I suppose. There we go. So, now it says Chromium. I keep thinking that I have a light there. Just set to have an indicator. So I don't know if it's doing anything. There we go. Okay. That's good. And I've got the creakiest chair in the world. Okay. I think now it's a good idea to actually turn that off. Give us a little bit of a zoom here. There we go. So, welcome, English United States. Keyboard US, well let's change that to US International. I don't want debugging, let's go. Okay, Wi-Fi is working out of the box, that's good. Ethernet as well, so that's very nice to have. In that case I will disconnect Ethernet. I was just hooking that up in case I would need to uh, do some trickery in the back. Alright, checking for updates. Sign into your Chromebook. Okay. Well, this appears to me to just be like, uh, not like to, it doesn't appear to have any installers or anything. So that is interesting. Um, let's see. 
because I do have a solution for this because I have this thing this is a, a very crude a very broken uh, SATA to USB 2.0 adapter because I'm getting the feeling that I will actually need to uh, restore the image directly to a hard drive instead of there we go of to the instead of to an external USB drive apparently this build does not have an installer so uh, so there's that or maybe I need to log into my Google account I actually don't know I don't know anything about Chrome OS so um, I'm gonna try to log in and uh, I'll be right back yep this is just regular uh, Chrome OS immediately booted okay what I'm now going to do is not exactly the best way, but uh, let's kill it and uh, turn it off. Okay, okay, let's get everything out of the way. And uh, we'll need to open this thing up, which means removing all the duct tape. Which is fun. So we can put that aside, and yes, I am aware that I have not disconnected the battery yet. I have now because it's not held on by anything. <laughs> That's always handy. I'm gonna have the duct tape on the other end. And now we need to get it to lift out of the SATA controller. Come on. Piece of crap. There we go, and now it's out. So now we connected to this crappy PCB. The drive's pretty warm, by the way. And we should be able to hook this up to the computer. If only I can actually find a mini USB cable, and I can. I can feel the drive spin up, but okay, there we go. There we go, there's an entire Windows 10 installation on that drive. That's good. <laughs> okay, well, this was a, a mitigated disaster. So, the target device is. Uh, let's see. Drive G, that would be G. And the image file is on my D drive, Chromium image. And right, access denied. Okay. Then we'll go to Isis Partition Manager. It's picking up even more drives now. What the actual crap is going on? It is seeing a 160 gig drive with basically nothing going on. Delete all partitions on the drive. Right. Convert to MBR. Well, okay, first we have to actually format it or apply changes. Now I want to convert it to MBR and I need to apply that as well. Okay. Done. Now I'll make a partition. Primary partition. I'll do FAT32 and save and go. Now I should be able to write to the E drive, which is this thing. So now it's E and write. Does it work now? Yes, it does. Okay. And everything is real freaking white because it's hard to actually get the proper lighting on this camera. But uh, there it's going. 
As you can see, this is going to take a couple minutes, and uh, once we're done, we can put the drive back into the laptop and uh, see if we can boot into Chromium OS. Alright, the writing is done. We can now put the WD Black back into the laptop. So, here it is. Here's the hard disk. So, there's a little bit of a, uh, a little thingy here. It converts the connector to a 90 degree SATA connector and that drops into the laptop because why follow the regular SATA standard? That's just silly. Alright, let's put the duct tape back on it. And all of the various Windows keys that are on this thing. <laughs> This laptop actually came with two Windows 7 serials, and they're both legit OEM keys. So that's interesting. So there you go. Let's snap that back together. And now we need to connect the mouse and the power again. So let's get the power. There we go. And a mouse because I think that's handy. And now, when we turn the laptop on, what we should be able to see is the thing actually. Oh crap. <laughs> Don't tell me the restore didn't actually bloody work and it's now just going to boot from the network. No! Notebook, hard drive. No, oh god, freaking really. Well, lo and behold, it is sort of working. I enabled UEFI boot, and uh, for some reason that worked. It loaded Grub, and then it's at least attempted to start Chromium OS. As you can probably tell by the lighting, we're losing light pretty fast. It is an evening. I'm doing this after work, as usual. So there's that. But that shouldn't prevent us from at least giving this a quick shot. Uh, I didn't plug in the mouse. That's super helpful. So I'll do that right now. There we go. I'll do it the quick and dirty way. Plug that in, and we've got a mouse. Let's go. Connect to my network. Connected. Skip updates, and now can I log in. Let's switch the languages back. It set up the machine in Dutch, and I want to play with it in English for the time being. And that's the wrong password. There we go. And there we are in Google Chrome because this is Chrome OS. All right, let's go to YouTube. That's looking pretty good. Let's see here. Let's set the video quality to 720p. Because that's what I'll be watching on this. Yep, that's looking great. Alright. That's good. So as soon as you close Chrome, you only get this black background, apparently. And here we can access some Google Apps. I don't think this has the Google Store, or the uh, Play Store. I think we only get the Google Chrome Web Store. But that's okay. There's quite a bit of apps in here, so we can even do screencasting. Got 
hangouts that nobody uses in this world. Some other stuff. Ookla speed test app, that's always good. Push bullet for notifications, some games. That's always fun. Alright. So that's all pretty cool. So at least we got it running. That's nice. It appears that everything is working. We've got a battery charging indicator at least in the bottom right. We can control volume. Of course audio was working just fine. We can see we have 59% battery that's charging right now. Our Wi-Fi is of course working as we verified. Notifications. Time is very much off but I can change that. So let's go into the settings here. Let's see. Let's pick a wallpaper while we're at it. I actually need to choose a file. I haven't downloaded anything, so we can't do that. That's okay. Can change mouse speed. Okay, Google search. Defense settings. What can we do? I want to change the time zone. Use 24 hour clock. That's one I want first. We don't do AM, PM here. And I need to set it to Western European Summertime Amsterdam. There we go. Excellent. Enable Bluetooth. I don't think I have Bluetooth in this laptop. But apparently I do. Oh, right. I actually discovered that in a previous video as well. Or, well, not in a video, but. Yeah, we do have Bluetooth apparently. That's okay. Very nice. So now that we've actually verified that the machine appears to be working properly, let's do some actual testing. So, featuring the Apple Watch, let's do a. Uh, let's see if we can actually get this time properly. All right. Let's see how long this takes to boot up, including the boot screen. Of course, in a proper Chromebook, this would only take like five seconds, but uh, in our case, we'll have to wait for a little bit. Right now, we're at 30 seconds. And there it is. Excellent. So that's about 40 seconds. That's pretty good. So let's fill in the password. And I'll log on. Your password is invalid. Well, Christ. Well, this one should work. And there we are. And we're booting straight into the Chrome browser. Where we can get some more goodies. Right, so that's the boot up test uh, over with. So, now let's actually take a look at overall web browsing performance. We've already gone over this in the previous video, or previous video, previous segment of this video. To some degree, just for good measure we'll do it again. First of all, we're going to see how well it will play YouTube and at which point it will start uh, chugging. I'll turn the audio down. Having some buffering issues there, but that's okay. Now let's go for the real quality test. Right now we're at 720p 60fps. I'll give you guys a little bit more of a zoom here. Yep, 
This is working beautifully so far. Let's knock it up to 1080p60. Let's see if we can get any dropped frames here. Still smooth. That's a good sign. Fan is kicking a little bit though. Let's try 1440p, which is useless because this display is only 768p, but for good measure. Okay. It did load, but it's not that great. Yeah, it's having some real buffering issues on the Wi-Fi now at 1440p60 and the CPU fan is kicking into top gear. Right. So there's that. So at least we know that is working. Okay. So this thing is good to go for a 60fps video. Let's do the obligatory CNN.com test. That loaded pretty much instantly very fast. Again this type of hardware is actually more powerful than you find in your typical Chromebook so I suppose it would be normal to actually uh, get some decent performance out of this. Yeah, a little bit of frame dropping here and there. But... <laughs> because it had to load the ads. It just seems that the uh, the Wi-Fi is a bit on the slow side of it at the moment, which is interesting. So, well, web browsing is absolutely a blast on this machine, so that's very nice. Something else I want to do is productivity. So we're going to go to Word Online. Let's make a document here. Of course, this is an online service, so if web browsing is good, then it should be good as well. But there are no real desktop applications, per se, for the Chrome OS. There are likely some other open source softwares, but I don't really particularly use any open source office applications. So I don't care that much. But uh, that's working fine. Okay. So something else we can try here is... Well, let's find another app here. That's interesting. Let's just type in office to see if we can find something else here. Nope, that's all just online stuff. Alright, that's okay. I will say though, this is really snappy, this system. And it's looking pretty sharp too. And I... What the hell is going on with the lighting? Come on! Stop overexposing yourself. There we go. That's a little bit better. Anyways, it is pretty darn zippy, this system. I really uh, think this is quite good. You can even go to Google Play, but I don't think we can download any apps or anything. Let's add this one. Because I don't think we have actually proper support for Android here. Apparently this goes through a Google kiosk. But at least we can actually browse this new source, so that's okay. Yep, that's loading up very nicely. At least we can read news articles, that's good. But, uh, yep, Android apps don't appear to be working because you have to add a device. And you have, and I can't actually do that from this particular device because it's not detected as such. It is detecting this as a proper browser session instead of a proper Android uh, session. So there's that. What else can we do in here? Of course, we have the Google services. We have multi-messenger, so you can do some Facebook stuff and all these various things. That's very nice. Have all your notifications and online services integrated into one machine. 
with a very lightweight OS, so that's that's good. So can I do gaming? That's also something we want to try. So let's do some. I don't even know what that is. Forty thieves. I don't know that one. Well, we'll go for the classic Klondike. There we go. Yep, we can drag that to that one. We can drag that there and that there. Click that away. Do that there and that there. Get the jacks over there. Get that out of the way. Yeah, you get it. Just your typical solitaire here. Works very well. We also got a Mario game, which apparently requires a plugin, which is not supported anymore. Well, that's great. So that's working like a charm. All right, we're gonna unhide that, and we're going to remove it. So yeah, that's a pretty brief overview of uh, this machine working on the Chromium OS. So one thing I want to try is to see how much battery life we can supposedly get on this uh, still decent battery. And the answer is 4 hours and 56 minutes. Let's see if we can get that in uh, vision here. Okay, apparently not. This is a bit much for my camera to handle, I would assume. But yeah. It does actually say that, so... Uh. So in a very optimistic world, this thing will last about 5 hours in Chromium OS. To put it into perspective, uh, the Windows prediction for this machine is about 3.5 hours on, the, on this battery, on a full charge. So I think you can definitely say that everything on this machine is working properly in Chrome OS, everything is working out of the box. We've got Wi-Fi, we've got Ethernet, we've got Bluetooth, we've got the battery working, the CPU is working, the graphics are working. It's basically a complete working machine with the Chrome OS and uh, I didn't have to pay a single penny for this machine so that is absolutely hilarious. So let's shut it down because we need to conclude this video and uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.